I've made photo frames from fabric and stuffed them and on some of them they, you have hoops on others you don't you can stand that up against um, a wall or on a stand which I've done in the past um, you can make little cute ones to put pictures of pets in there but it's an easy one for kids and beginners and for craft fairs um, very popular item so let's get started actually we need three sheets of fabric so on here I have the back and the front in the same fabric on here I have the back different just in plain calico to the spotty on the front now what you need is your main fabric you need a sheet of calico to go on the back of your main fabric and then you need your back so that's for the frame at the back and something to give it a bit more substance so it stands and this is called interfacing interfacing or stabilizer if you want to be a bit American um, is just something that gives structure to your fabric so it makes it a bit stiffer you can get it in different weights you can get lightweight so if you want to make something with chiffon or organza and you don't want to change too much structure but you want it to hold its shape you would use a lightweight this is a medium weight and you can get some really thick stuff that will hold the shape of a hat for example we don't need anything that stiff I've gone for a medium weight interfacing and it's fusible. Fusible just means iron on. If you look closely, you have a shiny side to one of them. That shiny side, that's actually glue. So when you want to adhere or stick the interfacing to your fabric, you need to use an iron and set it on a medium heat. So I set my iron to two dots. Check if you've bought a branded one check what the instructions tell you to do or ask the shopkeeper now the other thing is you want a dry iron what that means is you do not want steam the steam causes bubbles in your fabric and then you end up with a wrinkly a wrinkly um fabric so don't have it too hot and don't use steam I've heard of people using spray water. Don't do that. It misshapens your fabric. It might look good for a while while it's still a little bit wet, but it will eventually start rippling. So stick with a nice dry iron, no steam, medium weight. The reason why we want a medium heat, sorry, the medium heat, because some glues tend to go yellow. When it gets too hot, it cooks. So it starts to go yellow and the color filters through into your fabric. So don't make it too hot. So there we are, we've managed to glue that together. We've got some structure. When it dries, when it cools down, it will become a little bit stiffer. So while I've got the iron on and available, I'm going to use this to press these two sheets of fabric. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift, get rid of the main fabric, and I'm going to use this fabric to mark the center of the box. And at the center of the box is where the center of the picture will sit. So it's very important. And the way to do that, a good way to do that, is just fold your fabric, simply just fold your fabric. Let's mark it there. And then fold it again the other way. and just put a crease there. How easy is that? And now we've got the center, but we've also given ourselves a couple of lines to help make sure we get the right measurement because we need an opening for the picture sit, to sit through. My picture measures nine and a half centimeters across. I want to hide one centimeter there and I want to hide one centimeter there. So nine and a half take off two centimeters will give me seven and a half centimeters 14 and a half it measures 14 and a half i take off one centimeter there and one centimeter there i'm going to use 12 and a half so my opening is going to be 12 and a half by seven and a half let me write that down in the middle 12 and a half
So now when I sew along this line, I should have an opening. Perfect. So what we do now is we're going to put the good sides of this fabric together. So lay the good sides of this fabric together. Let's get rid of the mat. Good sides together and let's put some pins around there. So now pins are way out of the way of my box that I'm going to sew. I won't need to remove them. I'll keep the project going with them in. Easy so far. Let's take it to a sewing machine and sew that box. So let's lock our stitches. One, two, three. One, two, three, going back. Nice steady pace, keep it nice and steady. You might be able to focus in on that groove right in the middle of the foot and use that as a guide to follow your line. Got to the corner, let's pivot and turn. So three back, three forward, and then we'll cut the thread there. And there we go. Let's see if you can see it on that side. So we have a beautiful square all the way round. We just need to just fold that over and we'll create an opening. So I'm going to just cut and snip into there. So now I've created a hole all the way across and I'm going to snip right to the corners but not into the stitching, as close to the corner as I can get without cutting into the stitching. Once that's done, let's cut some of this fabric away and trim off the excess. Try and keep these lines straight if you can because if your fabric is a little bit see-through you might be able to see those lines, the edges of the fabric. Let's get rid of those pins. And now we need to bring back the iron. That fabric through to the other side. Now let me show you how to do this. If you hold and push that fabric as far apart as you can against this backing and pull just gently, you just need to pull gently and then we'll do the same on the other side. Whoops. I'm going to turn it up a little bit and add some steam. There we go. Do the same with the other sides. Crease that one. Flip that through. Now we've pressed that. It should I it should flip through easily. There we go. Corner like that. So we can check all our corners. If you find that there's a bit of pleating there. Go back into the fabric and snip some more right to the corner. As close to the stitching as you can get. Don't be frightened of going too close. If you do accidentally snip the stitches, just go in and sew that stitch again. Don't worry too much. Okay, good sides together. Good sides together like that. So we're going to put pins all around here. So we're going to sew all around the frame like that. And then we're going to stuff it and finish off sewing the center piece there. Lock the stitches again. And let's go. To the corner and turn. Right, take those pins out and then flip this through. 
can you see there's the frame let's give it a press and if you want to you can add embellishments so I'm going to use the one centimeter marking on this ruler and go all the way around And you can help if it's for a child you can help your child to do this very straightforward so there we go so there's my frame I just need to stuff around there now so I've got some stuffing I'm just going to add a little bit to that don't overstuff it because you need to be able to sew. So get the corners stuffed. So keep adding stuffing. Make sure it's nicely filled up like this. But careful not to overstuff. It's a very tricky one to balance. But when you've made a couple, you'll understand and appreciate how much to do. Right, I think that will do. Got a bit of a cloud poking out. But as long as I've got the corners done, I think we'll be fine. Right, here we go. Now you might find you struggle to get it under the frame, under the foot. Okay, let's start a little bit in and put the foot down and let's sew now as long as you've not overstuffed it it should work fine and then get to the line i think we can get one more stitch in there there we go last edge there we go and just join the two ends there we go do a reverse one two three and that's locked so grab my scissors and I'm going to just trim away all the extra fluff that we no longer need take your time on that once that's done and place your picture in the frame. Let's get that in there. And there we go. 